I know what so many of you guys are gonna say, Gabriel, you're 5'11", you're at 145 pounds, you are one of the tallest guys in your weight class, what do you know about being the shorter fighter? Well, the reality is, throughout the years, I have done rounds, numerous rounds, probably hundreds of rounds, with people who are 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", 6'7", who are just a lot bigger than me. So I know a lot about being the shorter fighter and the tactics you should employ. We're not just gonna talk about tactics, we're gonna talk about the truth of the situation as well. When you're in the gym and you're sparring with these people who just outsize you by so much. When it comes to competing against taller fighters. There's some hard facts, some truths that we have to face. And we're gonna address these before we go into all the best tactics that I like to utilize against taller fighters. Truth number one, just because they're taller doesn't mean you have some sort of strength advantage. Why is that? Well, normally, you would have a strength advantage. If you're against somebody in a fight and you both weigh 145 pounds, but one guy's here and one guy's down here, this dude down here usually has stronger legs or bigger biceps or massive shoulders. He has some attribute within his physique that makes up for his lack of height. And he has to be able to utilize that to his advantage. But when you're in the gym, you're not gonna have that. You're gonna be going up against people who are taller, and they weigh more. And this is one of the things that people forget about. They go, oh, I'm struggling so much. You know, I'm one of the shorter guys in the gym. Maybe I'm five, six and everybody's taller and I wanna know what tactics to utilize. And I have to remind them, well, to these tactics, which I would normally teach when you're at the same weight class, they don't apply the same because yeah, maybe I'd normally say like, get to the inside. The inside is your zone, but all of a sudden you're on the inside and you've got a guy who has 40 pounds on you. Well, you might be able to outspeed him, but maybe you don't wanna be here that much because if he just swacks you once, you're gonna be hurt. So we need to recognize that height advantage and being smaller, but thinking you're smaller and have that strength advantage is not always the case in the gym. Truth number two, which really bugs me about taller fighters is they don't take a moment to recognize, yes, I am the bigger fighter in both height and size. So I'm gonna do something to equal the playing field. Case in point, about six, seven months ago, there was a professional boxer in town who was a female, and she was at the gym doing some rounds with another girl. They finished up, she saw me working, she said, oh, would you do some rounds with me? I said, absolutely. So I come in, she fights at something like 130 pounds, and she's maybe 5'2", five, 5'3", five, maybe 5'4", at most. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna do what most people do, where I just stay on the outside, and I box her really long, and then when she gets to the inside, I wrap her up and I outmuscle her? I mean, I could do that if I wanted to be a jerk, but if you're the taller fighter and you have the size advantage in weight, then what I should be doing is I automatically widen my stance, I bend my knees, now we're fighting at the same height. From there now, when I do get to the inside, I don't wrap her up and use my strength, I fight in tight at her zone where she would normally be competing instead of being like, okay, we're, we're doing this game back here just because I'm bigger. So the truth is not everybody recognizes this and it makes it very frustrating for these shorter fighters because as we already said, they're outreached and they're outmuscled. So sometimes we just need to say to our training partners, come on guy, like you're way up there, your jab can touch me, can we do some infighting, but maybe a little bit lighter? You just need to remind people that not using your strength and your size all the time is good for both of us. So now that we've covered a couple hard truths about being the shorter fighter, going up against those tall people, let's go through some of my favorite tactics to get to the inside. I will first explain if you're fighting somebody your own size, how this works, and then explain how you might go about it when you actually lack the weight as well. First thing that you can do, if you're going against somebody who's a longer fighter, you wanna recognize that this distance is their distance. And usually around there or in tighter is your distance. But you might think every time I enter, I get hit. Or every time I stop, I get hit. We need to remember that we need to be just a little further back. Normally, if 
my, you know, my punch is here and they're just outside, that means I'm within punching range. So I'm gonna stay a little further back. I'm also gonna stay fairly mobile, especially with my head, so that this guy can't just touch me whenever he wants. Now, here's the key point. When I do decide to enter, and I'm gonna to have to enter at some time, otherwise I'm just running constantly, I need to get my head off the center line as I enter. I don't wanna drop my head, bring it back up, and then enter because again, it's gonna make it very easy for this longer fighter to just always stop me with a simple straight. I want to enter and get my head off the center line. And as I do that, I can throw a punch. I enter, I drop my head. Now hopefully from here, his punch misses because I moved my head, I've closed the gap, we're now at my punch range, and then from there I can go about letting my hands go. I don't wanna stay there indefinitely, so it might be something like enter, head off the center line, one, two, three, and then my quick exit. I wanna make this longer fighter very uncomfortable. Make him think that every time he stands his ground and he goes to defend, as I attack, he gets lit up for it. So now he decides, oh, okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more of a step backwards. And as soon as the longer fighter starts being like, okay, I'm gonna back up a little bit more, that gives you that advantage. Okay, now as I move forward, he's shifting backwards and his power is very weak. So even if he does land one of these, it doesn't matter. And I can sometimes even just take it to get inside and give my own shots. But it all starts with head off the center line as I throw my initial punch. Additional tactics that I really, really like are closing the distance with the hands up the middle so that I'm defending any straight punches and faking some sort of kick. Could come in numerous ways, but one of my favorites is to slide fake the front kick. I could show them a couple, get them thinking about it. Slide fake gets me within range, but again, I don't wanna just slide fake with my hands apart, because if I do get hit as I move forward, it's gonna be terrible. My head's gonna get knocked backwards, and I could even get knocked down because I'm sliding on one foot. So my hands go from here, they elongate, but they also close off the middle. I still wanna be able to see, so I'm not gonna close completely. Leave a little hole, I'm standing here, and I can either let my feet plant and then start punching, or I could come with a punch just as my foot is landing and then into the rest of my combo. Great tactic. Again, it's not limited to just that, but that is my favorite entry from a distance to really throw those taller fighters off. Now, as promised, we're gonna to touch on both of those entries, but we're gonna go from the perspective of, okay, it's not just the dude's taller, and once I get to the inside, I can rough him up. It's, oh, he's taller, and he hits harder because he's so much more muscular. When we enter and we're heads off the center line, once I start banging it, it's imperative now that I exit fast and clean. I get my combo off. Before, because I'm the shorter fighter, but probably the stronger one, once I get to the inside, I can stay here. I can start moving and I don't need to take that quick exit. But because you're dealing with a stronger fighter, and a taller fighter, they could grab you, they could hit you, anything's gonna be bad. So I need to make sure it's enter and exit. Then from there, I could do something like I go into that slide. And again, I enter and I exit. And I'm being very, very careful about that quick exit to make sure I'm not there for too long and get punished for it. For all the ladies out there, or just fighters who are still going into manhood, maybe you're like 14, 17 years old, you feel undersized and understrengthed, there's always gonna be the sad reality that you're just gonna be undersized. Just for now, at least for the guys who are growing, females, you're gonna be undersized most likely your whole time in the gym and there's not much I can do about that. I have somebody I do Zoom privates with and I know very often she's going, oh, you know, these guys are just doing everything they can to just keep me at bay, keep me at bay. When I get close, they wrap me up. I can't get out because they're so strong and I'm just going, well, this is just the situation and there's not much we can change because if I told somebody on the channel, let's say who's 5'4", who feels like, oh, I'm just so frustrated sparring with these big guys, what can I do? And I don't have a good answer for you, I sort of switch it and I go, imagine if I told you at 5'4", to go and spar with a kid who's 4'10", who weighs 70 pounds. What can I tell to this child that's really gonna help them beat you? 
There's nothing fantastic. I can give them these tips like, yeah, get your head off the center line. But really at the end of the day, it comes down to you just have to be the more skilled fighter. And that's why I've always had success with these big tall guys. Cause I go in, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, you're six, seven, but your skill level's here and my skill level's here. That is enough for me usually to still light those guys up and basically just wipe the floor with them. But if we start getting skill level somewhat even, it's going to be very difficult. But the little tactics I gave you today will help. They will make things easier. In addition, you can get really good at a couple things like throwing low kicks but protecting your head because normally when you throw a low kick, you just lean to the side and you're safe. But when people have really long arms and they just can go boom and hit you, you have to start now employing very tight hands. So if they do come to hit you, it goes off your arm and then you follow up with your punches. Defense is going to be so darn important as the shorter fighter because you take a couple shots and you go, oh shoot, and you get backed up. No good. You want to be able to take a couple shots and then close the distance. Get those counters going. I will have in early 2024 a whole defensive course which is going to be available. And this is going to be super exciting because I know many people have asked me to do a lot of defense on the channel. And this will be your whole guide all in one. You can follow along and you're going to see your defensive skills just skyrocket. So keep your eye out for that in January, February. But that's all for me today, guys. We really covered the topics that I wanted. Hopefully you left with a few little tips on how to improve that situation where you're going against somebody who's just taller than you and you can make sparring a little bit easier on yourself. Guys, as always, train hard and I will see you back here soon for another video.